Uh, my name is Carly Sandrock. My name is Bobby Walsh. We are the owners of Big Al here. Friends of ours, Frankie and Matt, had sent Bobby a picture message of Al. And was like, you have to meet this dog. He's like, you, your personality, but in a dog. And um, so we're like, oh yeah, 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 maybe sometime. And it was the morning, I, we were both supposed to be going to work. I had a little mini meltdown before work, so needless to say, I'm on the phone with Bob. And he's on his way to come pick me up. And he was like, instead of going to work, do you want to go to that shelter that make, uh, Matt and Frankie are at? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and so we went there, and then that's the day we met Al, and that's the day we decided to get a dog and bring him back. <laughs> we adopted him from a great place called Ramapo Bergen Animal Shelter in Oakland, New Jersey. And it, yeah, it just got some renovations. Um, and it's looking really great, and it's a no-kill shelter, and uh, mm -hmm. they loved Al. He was there for nine or so months before we were able to get him. They warned us before they brought him out. They said, you know, careful, he may try and bite. He's not that friendly. Do be, you know, just they're really great about how to handle and how to act around the animals. They're really great about educating people. But when they brought him out, he came up, he sniffed us, and he was like, all right, yeah, th these are my humans. You, you can take me now. So that's basically just how it went. <laughs> so... Al, for the first eight or so, almost probably nine years of his life, was part of this um, animal hoarding situation down in Louisiana. Um, over a hundred plus dogs, forty plus of them were dachshunds. Um, it it was assumed that he might have been used for breeding uh, because they did neuter him once he was part of the rescue. Um, I'm not sure how they got from Louisiana to New Jersey with him. I'm not sure if they partnered up with other rescue shelters, if it was a big mission, you know, group effort, I'm assuming something like that. Um, but when they rescued him, he had mange actually on the back of his ears, um, all down his backside. That's why his hair on his back is quite short. It's actually, and it, it's really soft. It kind of feels like puppy hair because it's it regrows and then it goes through stages and then sometimes the hair won't grow there still or he does have some funky ribs as well so it appears that like his ribs have been broken and then didn't heal back properly so sometimes once in a while um he does get a little touchy if you pick him up too quickly or anything like that the eight or nine months he spent in the shelter i think was okay but just because he was an older dog nobody had the desire to adopt him meanwhile we really didn't think twice about it. They said, you know, he is nine, but in our minds, he's a, he's a baby. <laughs> he's, he's a dog. <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you mean? I don't care if he's nine. You know, we just wanted to give him a nice home. Al, it's time to go outside. We'll go outside? Al, we'll go outside? Hey, we'll go outside? We'll go outside? All right, Al, come on. Put your coat on. <laughs> well, I successfully got his coat halfway on. And then he popped back down. Um, I think overall in the shelter, he did have a pretty good time there. Although, you know, and they said how he didn't really like walks that much or anything like that. But I think, I mean, because now it's the complete opposite. He loves having walks. He loves going outside. We've taken him 
Um, we've taken him hiking on the Appalachian Trail. He climbed up the whole way by himself. Of course, I had to help him on some some parts of it, but he's just kind of blossomed since I think there he was fine and they took great care of him, but he was just missing the trust and the love that I think, you know, they all need. Because uh, at a shelter, you know, you can do as much as you can, but the dogs are sad. They need people to love them. Al, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. He's very smart, so it, it is quite easy to teach him new stuff, but we also have to keep in mind his past and what he's been through, and um, that, you know, it may be harder to teach an older dog new tricks, but it's not impossible. Um, he's become quite a hit on social media. Um, I do have an Instagram account for him just because we got so obsessed with taking pictures of him. And so I was like, oh, we might. And then we went to a doxy meetup. That's what it was. We went to a doxy meetup in Washington Square Park, and everyone was like, what's his Instagram name? And I said, what Instagram name? So then we made one from there. One particular photo I took of Bob and Al together um, went viral. And so on, I mean, it went millions upon millions of hits from various different pages on the internet and Reddit and everything else. We've always been pretty outgoing people, but we've been forced to be even more social because, you know, oftentimes we're just walking him down the street for his morning potty break and someone will stop and say, oh, he's so cute, or how old is he, or what, ki what kind of dog is that? Because He's an Isabella Dachshund, which we found out after we adopted him is uh, pretty rare. Both, it's a recessive gene, like both parents have to be Isabella Dachshunds. And he is a purebred and everything, so people kind of like hearing about that story. Um, we interact with children a lot more. Um, and ironically, having never been exposed to children, he is so good with kids. Like he, We'll let them drag him around with his leash, you know. They, he'll, they'll come up and pet all over his face, and he just lets them. He, uh, he's so patient with them, too. With adults, if, if you're being a little annoying, he'll not give you the time of day and kind of walk away. But with kids, he'll sit there, and so we've been interacting with them more. You know, I feel really lucky. And, and everybody that I know that has adopted dogs feels the same. We all get the same emotions, you know. It's... It's a really, it's a blessing, honestly, to be able to find these animals who can come out of any situation and still love people after what people have done to them. It's crazy. Yeah, and then you find out your capabilities of like how much you can love another animal. Right. <laughs> and that's just a whole another amazing thing by itself.